So, uh, in this uh, lecture, we shall uh, study linear transformations, uh, isomorphisms, and matrix representation of linear transformations. Uh, actually, when we compare mathematical structures of same type, that time we study some order preserving mappings and such order preserving mapping in case of a linear algebra uh, are called linear transformations. So, uh, let us define this linear transformation. So, let V and W be vector spaces over same field F, a mapping T from V to W is called a linear transformation if the following hold that first condition is that T of u plus b is equal to T u plus T b for any vectors u and v in the vector space v. Here of course, this plus operation in the left hand side uh, represents plus operation in the vector space V and this plus operation in the right hand side represents plus operation in the vector space W or in other words this first condition means that this mapping T preserves addition operation of the vector space. Here T of alpha u is equal to alpha times T u for u belongs to the vector space V and alpha comes from this field F. This second condition is also uh, means that, that this mapping T preserves scalar multiplication. Combiningly, uh, this first and second can also be written like this. So, combining combiningly Winningly, first and second can be written as for u v belongs to vector space v and alpha beta belongs to a f t of alpha u plus beta v is equal to alpha times T u plus beta times T v. One can check this condition also for uh, I mean checking whether a mapping T is a linear transformation or not. So, let us see one example that let us check. So, let T 1 and T 2, T 1 and T 2 be mappings from R 3 to R 2 defined as defined as T 1 of x 1, x 2, x 3 is equal to x 1 plus x 2 and x 3, t 2 of x 1, x 2, x 3 is equal to x 1, x 2, here x 3. We shall check whether t 1 and t 2 are linear transformations or not. So, this T 1 is a linear transformation because 
T 1 is a linear transformation, transformation because it preserves addition and scalar multiplication like T 1 x 1 x 2 x 3 plus y 1 y 2 y 3 is equal to T of x 1 plus y 1 x 2 plus y 2 x 3 plus y 3 and according to this is T 1. So, according to definition of T 1 it is like this x 1 plus y 1 plus x 2 plus y 2 x 3 plus y 3 and this can be written as x 1 plus x 2 x 3 plus y 1 plus y 2 y 3 and that is equal to T 1 of x 1 x 2 x 3 plus T 1 of y 1 y 2 y 3. So, T 1 preserves addition operation and similarly T 1 also preserves scalar multiplication because T 1 of alpha times x 1 x 2 x 3 e that is equal to T 1 of alpha x 1 alpha x 2 alpha x 3 and according to definition of T 1 this is equal to alpha x 1 plus alpha x 2 alpha x 3 and this can be written as alpha times x 1 plus x 2 x 3 and that is equal to alpha times T of x 1 x 2 x 3. So, therefore, T 1 is a linear transformation, but one can check that T 2 is not a linear transformation that uh, T 2 is not a linear transformation not a linear transformation because it does not preserve addition of course, it does not preserve uh, scalar multiplication also. So, because T 2 of x 1 x 2 x 3 plus y 1 y 2 y 3 this is equal to T 2 of x 1 plus y 1 x 2 plus y 2 x 3 plus y 3 and according to the definition this is equal to x 1 plus y 1 into x 2 plus y 2 x 3 plus y 3 and of course, this is not equal to x 1 x 2 x 3 plus y 1 y 2 y 3. So, therefore, this T 2 is not a linear transformation. So, linear transformations are very useful and here we have one specific type of linear transformation that is called isomorphism. So, that here uh, we consider again uh, vector spaces V and W B vector spaces over the same field F, a linear transformation, a linear transformation 
t from v to w is called an isomorphism if t is 1 to 1 and 1 to if there is an isomorphism from v to w if there is an isomorphism from v to w then v and w are called isomorphic so isomorphic means that v and w have same structure algebraically they have the same structure so for every algebraic structures uh, we consider this concept of isomorphism uh, this verifies whether given vector spaces have the same structure or not so we can have some example of isomorphisms. So, this the first is condition is that uh, V is isomorphic to isomorphic to itself be, because the identity map the identity map is an isomorphism is an isomorphism from v onto itself so every another example is that every finite dimensional n dimensional we can say every n dimensional vector space is vector space over r is isomorphic to R n. Of course, uh, we will see uh, some more example of isomorphisms uh, later on. So, here we will see some properties of an isomorphism that properties of an isomorphism so if first properties are like this if t from v to w is an isomorphism then T inverse from W to V is also an isomorphism. So, for any linear transformation, we have for any linear transformation T from V to W image of the 0 vector that is T 0 is the 0 vector again <coughs> and further if T is an isomorphism then further if t is 
an isomorphism then t of v equal to 0 implies that v is the 0 vector and third property is like this uh, that an isomorphism third property says uh, that an isomorphism maps a linearly independent set to a linearly independent set that is if t from v to w is an isomorphism and S is consist of a set of linearly independent vectors S is consist of vectors v1, v2 to bk is a linearly independent set then this image of S T S that is T of V 1, T of V 2, T of V k is a linearly independent set, linearly independent set. So, of course, uh, this property we have already uh, given in the example here this theorem gives a result uh, which checks whether uh, I mean when two finite dimensional vector spaces are isomorphic. So, the result is like this to finite dimensional vector spaces over the same field over the same field f are isomorphic if and only if if and only if they have they have the same dimension So, this gives a criteria for checking whether finite dimensional vector spaces over the same field are isomorphic or not. So, next we shall see another important uh, point that we defined some spaces associated with a linear transformation, they are called rings spaces, range spaces and null spaces. So, they play an important role. So, let us have this definition that let T from V to W be a linear transformation, transformation then the kernel we define the kernel of T denoted by cur T is the set kernel of T is consist of all vectors in the vector space V such that T of V is equal to 0 and this set that is T of V, T of V that is consist of T of V such that V belongs to V is called the range of T and if this T is 
so if for any linear transformation t we have this uh, result one can check easily that for any linear transformation any linear transformation t from v to w kernel of t is a subspace of v and second result is that range of t is also a subspace of is a subspace of w that you can that one can check easily by using the definition of a linear transformation and it is not hard to check in fact we can also give briefly proof of this the first one is say uh, we have to consider that vectors u and v in kernel of so let u and v belongs to kernel of t and alpha beta they comes from the field f so this t of alpha u plus beta v that is equal to alpha times t u plus beta times t v this is equal to 0. So, this implies that alpha u plus beta v belongs to this kernel of t and hence kernel of t is a subspace. Hence, kernel of t is a subspace of v. Similarly, one can also prove uh, this range of t is a subspace of uh, v. So, let w 1 w 2 belongs to this range of t then there exist vectors v 1 v 2 in the vector space b such that t of v 1 is equal to w 1 and t of this v 2 t of v 2 is equal to w 2. So, we will we shall show that this for any scalars for any scalars alpha beta in f we show that alpha w 1 plus beta w 2 belongs to range of t. So, now the image of that alpha v 1 plus beta v 2 is equal to alpha w 1 plus beta w 2. So, since this alpha v 1 plus beta v 2 is an element of v, we get that alpha w 1 plus beta w 2 that belongs to this range of t, range of t. Hence, this range t is a subspace of w. So, uh, here uh, we give this another definition that the dimension of this dimension of kernel of t is called nullity nullity of t and dimension of range of t 
is called the rank of t. So, here we are having an important result that uh, relates this uh, nullity and rank and dimension of the vector space. Of course, the dimension of the vector space has to be finite. So, that result is known as this rank nullity theorem. So, this is a very famous theorem called rank nullity theorem. So, uh, let V be a finite dimensional vector space, V be a finite dimensional vector space with dimension of V be equal to n then for any linear transformation then for any linear transformation t from v to w we have the following relation we have this following relation that nullity of t nullity of t plus rank of t is equal to dimension of v. So, of course, one can uh, prove this theorem easily, it is uh, uh, not difficult. We will give your outline of proof of this theorem, outline of proof of the theorem. So, here one considers uh, that since dimension of B is finite that dimension of kernel of T also finite let dimension of kernel of T that is also nullity of T be equal to k ok. This is that is k is the nullity of T and V 1, V 2 to V k be a basis for kernel of T. Of course, this k is less than or equal to n. So, now this basis of kernel of T can be extended to a basis of V. This basis can be extended to a basis for V say V 1, V 2, V k, V k plus 1 up to V n. Then one checks that this T of V k plus 1 images of these vectors V k plus 1, V k plus 2 up to T of V n is a basis for range of t. Hence, rank of t is rank of t is equal to n minus k and 
we get the result. So, this rank nullity theorem is also very useful. So, next we shall see matrix representation of a linear transformation uh, that that is matrix representation of a linear transformation. So, here we see that every linear transformation can be expressed as a matrix and every matrix gives a linear transformation or uh, there is some sort of correspondence among uh, matrices and linear transformation. So, sometime people refer therefore, people refer uh, matrices as linear transformations also. So, first here we shall see from matrix to linear transformation. So, this matrix to linear transformation, linear transformation. So, here we are having a matrix m by n matrix. So, say a with entries a i j b an m by n matrix over let a be a matrix over a field f then we will find a linear transformation associated with this uh, matrix so here uh, recall that an n dimensional vector space over f. So, we consider that. So, let b be an let b be n dimensional vector space n dimensional vector space over f, then elements in V, elements in V can be written as n tuples of elements in V or that is n minus 1 matrices over f that is x 1 x 2 up to x n here x i is they come from f and similarly similarly let w b an m dimensional vector space dimensional vector space over f consisting of consisting of elements of the form x 1 up to x n x m with x i comes from f. Then we define a mapping say T from V to W as T of any element x 1, x 2 to x n as this matrix A which is M of size M by N and that is multiplied by this matrix x 1, x 2 to x n. So, this is a matrix multiplication and its resultant 
will be an m by 1 matrix or that is an element of w. Then easily one can verify that T is a linear transformation. Then T is a linear transformation. This can be checked by applying properties of this matrix A also and this is how we get a linear transformation T from given any matrix M. Uh, notice that if A is a matrix of size M by N, then we get a linear transformation from an N dimensional vector space B to an M dimensional vector space W. So, next we shall consider the converse of this that is from linear transformation to a matrix that converse of this from linear transformation from linear transformation to matrix or in other words we see matrix representation of a linear transformation. So, here we consider this uh, a linear transformation let T from V to W be a linear transformation, linear transformation where dimension of V is equal to N and dimension of W is equal to M. And we consider basis in the vector space V and W. So, let this V 1, V 2, V n and W 1, W 2, W m be basis for V and W respectively. Actually, we find matrix representation of linear transformation T with respect to these bases. That means, we fix a basis in the vector space V and a basis in the vector space W and with respect to these two bases, we find lin matrix re representation of this linear transformation. Uh, so, here we find the matrix corresponding to this linear transformation like this. So, uh, T of V 1 we shall see images of the vectors V 1, V 2 to V n with respect to this linear transformation. So, T of V 1 is a uh, is an element in the vector space W. So, therefore, T of V 1 can be written as a linear combination of the basis vectors W 1, W 2 to W n, W m. So, let us consider that linear transform that linear combination be like this T of V 1 is equal to A 1 1 W 1 plus A 1 2 W 2 plus A 1 m W m and T of V 2 is A 2 1 W 1 A 2 2 W 2 plus A 2 m W m like this T of V n image of V n is equal to A n 1 W 1 plus A n 2 W 2 plus A n m W W m sorry this is W m. So, uh, here the all this A i j is where all this A i j they are in the field f i from 1 to 2 n and j from 1 to 2 m. 
they all belongs to this field f so now from this expression this we find the matrix corresponding to the linear transformation t and it is like this that now the matrix corresponding to corresponding to the linear transformation the linear transformation is actually this matrix that here we consider the coefficients of first linear combination as first column that a 1 1 a 1 2 and this a 1 n a 2 1 a 2 2 a 2 n and like this a n 1 a n 2 a n m. So, this is uh, this matrix here we are having this uh, basically n uh, 1 ok this is 1 a 1 m ok sorry so this 1 m 2 m a n m. So, this is basically an m by n matrix. So, size of this matrix is m by n. So, here we will consider an example uh, how to find this matrix representation of a linear transformation. You notice that if we consider different bases for the vector spaces B and W, then we may get different matrix corresponding to this linear transformation. Of course, those uh, uh, matrices are not totally different, they are also related and uh, they are in fact similar and uh, that we are not going to prove. So, let us see one example here. So, consider this example. First example is that we shall consider a matrix and from there we get a linear transformation. So, that is find uh, the linear transformation find the linear transformation associated with or corresponding to this corresponding to the matrix say that is 1 3 minus 2 0 4 1. So, here this matrix is of size 2 by 3. So, we get a linear transformation from R 3 to R square. So, the corresponding linear transformation. So, let T be the corresponding uh, linear transformation. transformation which is given by so t is basically a linear transformation from r3 to r square and t of any x1 x2 x3 that is given by 1 3 minus 2 0 4 1 that we multiply with this x 1 x 2 x 3 and we get this as x 1 plus 3 x 2 minus 2 x 3 and here we get this 4 x 2 plus x 3. 
So, this is the uh, linear transformation associated with the given matrix. Then example 2 is uh, like this. Here we consider a linear transformation. Consider the linear transformation, linear transformation, transformation T from R cube to R square defined by defined by T of x 1, x 2, x 3 is x 1 plus x 2 twice x 3. We will we shall find matrix representation of we shall find matrix representation of this linear transformation matrix representation of this linear transformation. So, here we uh, li this linear transformation with respect to with respect to the basis say that is B co consisting B of 1 1 0 0 1 4 1 2 3 and B prime is consist of 1 0 0 2 of R 3 and R square respectively. So, now we shall find image of this uh, basis vectors that T of 1 1 0 that is according to definition of this linear transformation this value is 2 0 and that can be written as linear combination of basis vectors in the range space is like this 2 into 1 0 plus 0 times this 0 2. Image of the next basis vector that 0 1 4 is 1 8 and this can be written as linear combination of basis vectors in R 2 or in the range of T s 1 times 1 0 plus 4 times 0 2. Then image of 1 2 3 is 3 6 from the definition of this t and this can be written as 3 times 1 0 plus 3 times 0 2. So, now this coefficients from these coefficients we get the matrix of T. Now, the matrix corresponding to T corresponding to T is given by that 2 
zero one four three three, or in other words, that also we can think as transpose of this coefficient matrix. So this is how we find matrix representation of a linear transformation. So of course here we are getting this matrix representation of a linear transformation with respect to some bases. We if, if we change these bases in the domain and range space of this T, then we get different matrix. Okay, that that's all for uh, this lecture. Here we stop. Thank you.